Hi everyone, it's Ryan from Majingo.com and in this lesson we're going to learn how to quickly snapshot and archive a Git repository using the git archive command. The git archive command really could come in handy if you needed to share some website files to someone outside of the confines of the git repository. I do this a lot when I prepare code downloads that I provide with my courses. We're going to cover a few different ways to use git archive. The first way is by archiving a local repository. And then with that same local repository, we'll archive a specific commit or point in time in that repository. And finally, we'll review archiving a remote copy of a repository and what your options are at GitHub. For this lesson, I'm going to use the git in the commits repository. This is the one that I used in my git courses. If you haven't already, check out the git courses by going to majingo.com git. Finally, there are links to the repository and any other materials that you'll need right alongside this lesson. So to archive a local repository, we use the git archive command, which takes a moment in time in the repository and then exports the files and then compresses them into an archive format. We can choose the type of archive and what we want to name it. So this isn't like creating a copy of the repository like you would do with git clone. Think of it more like an export. And the command looks like this, git archive. I'm going to run this inside the local git repository for the git and the commits project. And run in its simplest form, git archive will return the usage instructions for the command. So at a minimum, we need to tell git archive the commit that we want to archive. And the simplest place to, to archive is at head. So if I do git archive head, this is going to archive it, but it's going to archive it out to standard out, which isn't super helpful to us. So we want to make it archive out to a compressed file. Now to find out the formats that is supported here in git archive, we do git archive dash L and we get our uh, archive formats. We have tar, tgz, tar.gz, and zip. So I'm going to use zip since that's a pretty common archive for, for the common people that can just unzip this on their computers. Uh, so we're going to use that. So to use it, we say git archive format is zip. And I'm going to specify the output file here. And I want the output file to be the commits.zip. And then we're going to specify head again, because we want to archive at that point in time in the repository. And we do that. And we can see we have this v-commits.zip file. So if I go to the finder here, you can see here's the zip file. I'm just going to unzip that. And then here's the folder, which has all of our files and folders in it for the site. All right, so that is all looking good. Back in the terminal, we are going to try something different, which is we're going to leave out the format option. Because if we do, Git Archive will infer the format from the file name that we specify using output. So let's do that. And we, again, we have our .zip file. And if we unzip that, it would be a, uh, a zip file like we just created. All right, so let's remove that. And instead of only archiving at head, I uh, want to archive at another point in the repository. And since git is a series of commit objects, this means that we can archive it at any commit I mean, it's a tag or a branch or whatever we want. So let's archive at a tag that we created during a previous git course. So if I do git tag, you can see I have two tags here. I like to archive this first one, version 1.2.1. So to do that, I do git archive. We're going to do the format of zip and output of the commits.zip and then for the point in time, we'll do v.1.2.1. And there we go. Now we have this zip file that has been archived at that point 
in time in the repository. Again, this is a great way if you wanted to mark a software release and then create a zip file that you could use for distribution, you can do it just like this. There are other options that you can use, and if you ever want to know what those are, you can just do git archive without any options, and you will see a list. You can see you can do prefix, verbose, output, compress faster, compress better, all sorts of things that you can do there. You can also archive from a remote repository, and unfortunately I can't show you this because GitHub doesn't allow it, and this repository is stored on GitHub. But on GitHub they do offer an alternative option, which is to uh, download the zip file, and they sort of create the archive for you right on the site, but you can't do it remotely from the command line. We look at the commits repository on GitHub, and there's a link to this right next to this video. You can see I can download a zip file of this repository, and I'm downloading it uh, sort of head here of master, and I can download a zip file of the repository, and that's essentially doing the same thing as naming it uh, with uh, the name of the repository and then the branch that you're downloading. So that's another way of doing it of an archive right from GitHub but uh, you're not going to be able to remotely archive uh, a GitHub repository from your local machine. If you are running a Git repository that is not GitHub, that is maybe self-hosted, that is most likely a possibility assuming that is enabled. Okay, so that's a brief rundown of how to use Git archive to export files from a repository for distribution. If you want to learn more about Git, please go to majingo.com git and check out the Git courses and articles that we have at the site. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next lesson.